Welcome to the August subscription coffee tasting video. Is that what we call it? Something like that. Uh, I'm here to taste the three coffees we're sending out to all our coffee subscribers uh, around the world. We do ship around the world. And uh, our coffee subscription works like this. I select three coffees every month that we send out. So you can subscribe from one to six bags. If you subscribe to six bags, you get two of each of the coffees. If you subscribe to one bag, you only get one, the first coffee. And so on. If you want to learn more, you can go to our website, read about it there. You can stop, pause, change the subscription at any time. We do ship with DHL worldwide now, uh, so that means you actually get the coffee within a couple of days. And of course, inside Norway, uh, which is our biggest market, we ship with uh, Bring, uh, so you don't have to do the hassle with other <laughs> delivery services. <laughs> uh, and that normally takes a couple of days as well. Cool. I'm here with Daniel. Hello, Hello. Daniel. Hello. Who are you? I'm the roaster here. Like the roasters together with Mats. Yes. Yes. So. And also a barista. Yeah, also a barista. Yeah. And sometimes we help Ben with uh, our wholesale manager to. You deliver a coffee, so you help the, our, our customers with the calibration and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. He was the old potato, so. Now you're the new potato. I'm the new potato. Yeah. We, in Norway, we love new potatoes. Every there's a season every year, so you're the new potato now. New potato. But very soon you will be an old potato. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> All right. Uh, how long have you worked there? Two years? Three years. Three years? No. Yeah. Time flies. Time flies. And what has been your best experience so far? The most fun? Gothenburg in uh, February, yeah. was it? We were oh. in Gothenburg in February. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. What happened there? We were, yeah, we were competing in the Nordic Roaster competition. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. The whole like the build up to, to that was like cupping and yeah, quality checks and stuff. Yeah. So much fun. And the trip of course. The trip was also nice. Yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of a new Nordic roasting competition called the uh, Nordic Best Roaster. The format is almost the same as the old Nordic roasting competition. Yeah. Uh, and we like to compete in that because it requires you get the, it was 10 roasters, we all got the same coffee that we had to roast, and then we yeah. also had to submit a, a, a coffee that we had sourced on our own in a certain category, so it was a washed coffee from Central America and South America. I think so, yeah. with a price limit. With a price limit, which is nice, and uh, I think we came second. We did. Yeah, we don't like to lose, but uh, the winner was a worthy winner, it was, um, uh, it was, what's the name again? Um, Good Life Coffee Good in, life, in yeah. Finland, Finland yeah. and uh, they were super happy, but the coffees were super nice. So. Yeah, very good coffees. Yeah, cool. We're not here to talk about Good Life Coffee, but shout out to Good, La good Life, um, good friends of ours. Um, we're here to talk about the subscription coffees that we're sending out in, to our subscribers in August. And finally, African coffees have arrived, so we're yes. tasting... What do you think we're tasting? Either Ethiopian or Kenyan, yeah. so it's well, a 50-50, yes. Well, those are the two countries we buy from in Africa, so yeah, we're tasting Ethiopian coffees today. Oh, great. So three different ones uh, from two different farms. Hmm, how is that possible? Mm. Let's start with the first one. And uh, of course you're gonna guess blindly which coffee this is, since you're an expert. Because Daniel also joins me every Monday, or every second Monday, because Mats and Daniel both uh, help me with quality control. So every Monday I do it, and then they join me to kind of be a second person who will do the quality control. Where we cut all the rolls we did the previous week, and we kind of take some notes, and we look at profiles to see how we adjust and so on. Yeah. Right, can you guess what this is? It's quite light. Yeah. Quite delicate. Yeah. Has some um, some fruity notes, but also some citrusy notes. Mm, yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, citrus is a fruit, so fruity, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yellow fruit, but mm -hmm. uh, definitely on the citrus side. Yeah. yeah. What, what do you think? Which where is it from? I would. So it's, it's quite light. Yeah. Um, I'm not super. Probably. I would say a Chemo. Yeah. You're 100% right. Nice. <laughs> I was going to say the other one, but... Yeah, um, no, you can wait. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this coffee is from uh, Khalid Chifa. Uh, his farm name is Echemo. 
It's near the Korcha forest in Ethiopia, so very close to Agaro, uh, which is kind of west, southwest. Um, so you basically have to fly to Jima from Addis, and then you drive a couple of hours, and then you reach his farm. And it's an old farm that he inherited from his grandfather, and then his father, the trees are planted, you know, his grandfather planted the trees, most of them. So when you walk the farm, they never pruned or stumped or anything. So the trees are actually really tall. So you actually walk underneath like a canopy of coffee trees. And of course, over years, they have cut down a lot of the kind of bigger trees, the native trees for firewood and stuff. But Khaled is now replanting it because he wants to grow shade uh, because he knows that it's better for the land and for the coffee. It's 100% organic. It's actually certified. Um, the only thing they do on the farm is to cut weeds and because the coffee trees are creating like a quite thick canopy, uh, the weeds, they grow, but it's not like super aggressive. So, but they still have to cut maybe every second month. Yeah. And they do it by so machete. Cool. When they pick the coffee, sometimes they actually have to climb the coffee trees. They stand in the coffee trees picking. That's how big they are. So people say coffee is a shrub, but they're actually trees. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but normally when they're cultivated, it looks like a shrub. But uh, there are actually trees. Do you know how old the trees are? Some of them are, you know, 80 years old, and some of them are planted later. Um, I think the farm is around 30 hectares now, and Khalid is also planting some of the new improved varieties from the Jimma Agricultural Research Station, uh, with the sexy names of 74110, 74148, yeah. stuff like that. Uh, so there will be a small amount of that mixed into this, but um, yeah. And then I was there in November and uh, we talked about how to improve the coffee. We've been buying coffee from HMO for, I think, four years, four or five years, since 2019 Something maybe. Like that, yeah. And because of COVID and other stuff, I wasn't able to go very often. So uh, last November I went uh, with the purpose of trying to improve everything, both on his farm and also Tatmara. And uh, we sat down and agreed upon a protocol for him to follow when he washed the coffees. Uh, and uh, like, which, which involves like a cherry fermentation overnight, yeah. and then wash, uh, depulping the coffee in the morning, fermenting it till the next day, then washing and so on, and then the drying uh, with on raised beds on the shades. So they put up shade nets, and then as soon as the coffee was finished, we leave it for a few days just to rest, and then we put it in grain pro bags to store it in grain pro bags. That means airtight kind of plastic bags. And then uh, when we brought it to Addis, every single batch or picking was kept separate. I got samples of each and every one. And then there was a lot of coffee. So I, I selected what I thought was the best ones, put them in it together into a blend because the moisture was almost the same. The coffee tasted more or less the same, but we were able to take out the bad ones. And so we only got the good ones. And then we found a new mill in Addis, both for Tatmara and Khalid's coffees, um, where we're doing vacuum packing now. So that means yeah. the coffee stays fresh and tastier for a longer period. That's maybe like, that's a huge like quality boost. Yeah, and it's, it's kind of like a boring thing to work on because it's mainly a logistical thing. <laughs> it's not as sexy as uh, working on fermentations and all these kind of things, but uh, it really improves the coffee and yeah. especially the shelf life. And we, we like clean, or you have to like clean coffees because they work here. <laughs> but I like clean coffees, clean washed coffees. Uh, so the way to improve that is normally drying. Also, of course, cleanliness during process and especially storage and stuff like that. And the new mill is much more tidy, you know. Um, yeah, so we were able to improve the coffees a lot just by looking at that. And then we, we actually cooperate with Belco. Belco is an import company in Europe. But we don't use them as an importer. Uh, we use them more as an exporter. <laughs> so they have an office in, in, um, in Ethiopia where they handle all the paperwork and the logistics for us. Um, and also uh, Fantanesh, who is working there, she was able to go to Khalid's farm to follow up on the process and that they were doing everything that we agreed on. So that means especially the lot separation, like uh, one picking was, we put letters on, so lot A, lot B, lot C, lot D, and so on and each and every one of those were stored separate. The bags were marked and everything uh, so that I could cup it and then put them together based on yeah. that. And that's kind of how we work on Tamana, Caballero, Nascimento. Yeah, it's pretty standard, but... Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, but instead, of like last year, we got one sample. Yeah, and, and if uh, you have one bad picking. Yeah, and you're a roaster, so you know that there were bag, uh, what do you call it, variations. Yeah, Some sure. bags, you know, didn't roast the same as other bags. And uh, we did also cup some, some batches tasted different than others. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So. Pretty mm. good. Pretty good. Yeah. Lighter this year than previous years. Yeah, I, I think. think. Yeah, more pronounced yeah. acidity maybe. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a uh, it's a little bit different than the typical washed year good chef uh, coffees. It's not as aromatic, no. but it's more like delicate and, and fresh. Let's go to the second coffee, and you have to guess this one as well. I'm putting you on the line here. Oh. I can already tell. Yeah, what is it? By smelling. This is a uh, tatmara. Yeah. And it's natural. Natural. Yeah. Natural process tatmara. Ah, very very nice. This year we did the same like with the uh, chamo. So we asked Negusia to keep every single lot separate, and he produces quite uh, or less coffee. Uh, not necessarily because he has less land or anything, but uh, he doesn't have access to a lot of pickers. So the batches are quite small. Uh, so the stuff that he does high quality uh, was small batches. So some of them were like 200 kilos, 50 kilos, 100 kilos. So based on that, we had to select each and every lot and put them together. Uh, so we separated the varieties and also every batch and then built it into bigger lots. Mm. And uh, I think this year he was able to dry quite efficiently. The weather wasn't too bad. Normally it rains a lot. He, Tatmara is in Bonga, in Kaffa. So it rains a lot during harvest, and that means producing naturals is a challenge because you have to dry the whole cherry. Yeah, it's more to dry, yeah, basically. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, a couple of years ago he had huge problems, too much rain, coffee gets moldy, you know, the quality yeah. suffers. This year you can taste that it's super clean. It's not very mm -hmm. pronounced natural. No. For sure, uh, it's yeah, very clean. Has this still this natural like this strawberry ripe, uh, almost like ripe mango yeah. taste to it, but it's very clean yeah. compared to other naturals. It's not sure. rotten. It's not rotten, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's more like fresh fruit and uh, rotten. Mm. And I think for me that's the uh, a lot of people like that kind of more funky natural style. I'm the opposite. I like more of that clean more kind of firm acidity, uh, fresher fruit style, yeah. which is difficult to produce. You have to do really thin layers on raised beds and do super uh, consistent drying. Uh, if you want more funky style, you normally dry the coffee where you put thicker layers on the drying table, so more cherries on the table, so they can kind of ferment while they're drying. Whereas if you don't want that and want less of this kind of fermenty flavor, you do thinner layers. So the fruit flavors we're tasting now is definitely from kind of yeast fermentation that happens naturally during drying of, of coffee cherries. Mm. Very good. Really nice acidity this year. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah, it's not uh, so sour. Like uh, sometimes naturals can have this kind of slight sour yogurty yeah. acidity. This is like super uh, firm. structured. Yeah, yeah it has a, like, a good structure to it. You sound like a wine taster. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so the second coffee, a natural processed coffee from Tatmara, the most beautiful farm on the planet, yeah. I think. It's literally a forest, and inside there are some coffee trees. And uh, his biggest pest, we call it pest when it's animals, yeah. uh, is baboons. They break the trees and eat the cherries. Whereas in Colombia, for instance, the biggest pest is broca, which is the coffee berry borer. It's like an insect. I would rather have baboons than insects. I'm not so sure. <laughs> <laughs> all right, third coffee. You have to guess this. This should be an easy guess. They're all from Ethiopia. There's only one left. Mm. But this is maybe what I'm most excited about. And our customers, for sure. This is a... Uh, they have been taking part in it. Yeah. So we're talking about the Tatmara washed. Yeah. Washed coffee from Tatmara for the first year. Mm. And uh, we basically did a fundraising uh, on our 15 year anniversary, yeah. which is two years ago. We uh, sometimes we have like this fundraising on our anniversary. So basically in our coffee shop, people could pay whatever they wanted for coffee. 
and you know, I think the biggest was 200 euros for an espresso. Yeah, something like that. Two hundred and fifty. Yeah, something like that. And the money would go to this project at Tatmara, which was to build a wet mill. Uh, and it's because of the problem we just talked about. It rains a lot during harvest, so drying naturals is really difficult. So, and I'm a fan of washed coffees. I really like Nagusia's coffees. So we decided to sponsor him to build a wet mill so that he could produce uh, more consistent quality, especially when it rains. And we call it in Norway to have more legs to stand on. Yeah. <laughs> so one natural leg, one washed leg. Um, and uh, it took some time to get this up and running because uh, getting material and the machines and everything in Ethiopia can be quite challenging. Uh, and then we also lacked, <laughs> the more we waited, the more money we needed. So we sponsored, I think, $10,000 in total, whereas 6,000 of them were raised by our customers. And then um, uh, Christophe from uh, Terre de Café in, uh, in Paris, he sponsored $4,000. And then Belco chipped in the rest, I think. Um, and we were able to build a nice little wet mill that we opened up in November. Yeah. And then, uh, so I went there also in November to kind of go through the protocol. It's the first time Nagusi washes coffee, so he needed training. He's never done this before. So, no. the only thing that I regret is that I only asked for twenty bags, and uh, because the results were fantastic, and we so we separated every single batch, and all of them tasted fantastic, uh, really aromatic coffees. Um, so next year, hopefully, we'll get a lot more, and yeah. it's faster to produce, faster to dry, more consistent. So for him, it's uh, much better. And we installed a machine that doesn't use a lot of water. So uh, it's not really a It's a the same machine that they use on Los Pirineos? More or less, yeah. It's yeah. like an eco pulper. Yeah. yeah, more or less. What, is, what does it taste like? Mm. Well, this is much more intense. Mm -hmm. mm. It's, mm. oh. More intense than the Chemo. Yeah, yeah for sure. It's, uh, I think even more intense than the natural. Like, it's more aromatic. Mm. Yeah, and it's very sweet. Mm. Uh, that's maybe weird to say about a acidic coffee, but no, it can be sweet. It has to have a lot of sweetness. Yeah, I get flavors like peach, mm. quite kind of that kind of peach candy you can buy in Norway, <laughs> mm. and also more florals. It's just yeah. more of everything, I think. More of everything. Yeah, yeah. just more super nice coffee. So this is a. Uh, 74110, 74112 varieties. Um, and that's how it tastes like when it's washed. It's really, yeah. uh, really, really good coffees. Um, we only got 20 bags, so most of it is actually going out to our subscribers, but we will have a little bit for sale also outside of the subscription. Yeah. But um, it's not enough to, to serve everyone in the subscription, so that's why it became the, the third bag. Uh, yeah. in the subscription but I have to say thank you to all our customers who supported us during our anniversary and I know Negusia has also shown great appreciation for this we recorded a podcast when I was there in November yeah that's right so if you want to listen to Negusia the farmer behind Tatmara Coffees uh, super nice guy uh, check in to that podcast because uh, at least for me it's one of the nicest podcasts we were sitting inside this little uh, mud hut. He ma they make like uh, the walls are mud and, and sticks, and then the the ceiling is like a straw ceiling, so it's really soundproof. So we sat inside there uh, the, around the bonfire, uh, waiting for him to make pizza, <laughs> and um, and we had a beer and uh, some coffee, and we talked about he, the way he farms and everything. You like the coffees? Oh, it's so good. Which, and very which is your favorite? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's so interesting because yeah. you have the washed and the natural from the same farm, mm. pretty much uh, the same cultivar. And then you have another washed from a different farm. Mm. Different cultivars? Yeah. And it tastes very differently. Mm. And these farms are not far apart. Like uh, The roads are pretty good, um, but it, it's kind of... Echemo is more like north and uh, Tatmar is a little bit further south. So... Uh, Maybe two hours, two hours. If you could drive from one farm to the other, it would take two hours, but you have to go through Jima and then back. So it takes a little bit more. But uh, super interesting that in this area, there's a lot of diversity and flavor. And that's part of the reason why I go there. Because uh, if you go to like Yergachev, Sidamo, 
yeah, there's a lot of diversity, but uh, most of the farmers grow this new kind of improved varieties. Whereas in Jima and that area around there, there's a, at least I find it a lot more diversity in flavor, probably because there's a lot more diversity in varieties as well. Yeah. So um, that's why I wanted to go there. Hey, it's a good choice. Like, yeah. So good coffee, so, and it sticks out. Yeah. yeah. Cool. That's it for now. Thank you, Daniel. Anything Thank you. you want to say? Nothing much. No. Happy August. Uh, happy August. <laughs> Enjoy the coffees. And uh, thanks for your support. Thanks for watching. And uh, as I said, if you want to check out our coffee subscription, go to our website. And also check out the podcast that I recorded with Negusia. Um, until next time, ciao, ciao.